Tire Pilot Plus Installation Procedures. Prior to starting the Tire Pilot Plus system installation, it may be helpful to first determine where each component will be located on your trailer. This diagram shows the overall system design. By first determining the current location of the trailer air tank, the desired location of the control box, and the desired location for the T fitting between the front and rear axles, you can then more easily determine how long to cut each length of tubing during the installation process. Note, to avoid confusion, it may be helpful to locate the T fitting close to the control box as shown in the following procedures. Note, the control box, which houses the regulator assembly, should be located so that it is protected from rocks and flying road debris. The location near the back of the trailer is ideal. However, you must take care to avoid interference with the stop bar if installed on a sliding suspension. We recommend installing the control box first in order to assist with measuring the airline tubing during installation. However, it is not required. Your suspension configuration and dimensions may require a fabricated backing plate in order to securely install the control box. Here you can see a sample control box attached to a steel plate bolted to a suspension cross member. To continue with the Tire Pilot Plus system installation, first remove all of the existing hubcaps and gaskets. If your trailer has oil filled hubcaps, properly drain and dispose of the oil. Next, clean the hub and axle surface to remove any remaining oil or grease. Before proceeding, confirm that the spindle plug assembly and hubcaps provided in your Tire Pilot Plus kit are the proper size for your axle bore and wheel hub. If your spindle plug does not appear to fit, or the hubcaps are the wrong size, please contact your SAF Holland representative to order the proper size kit. Also, make sure that the valve stems in each wheel are offset 180 degrees from each other if your trailer has dual tires. If the valve stems are not offset 180 degrees, you will need to remove the outer wheel and rotate it to the proper position before beginning the installation. Axle Airline Installation Next, you must remove the Welsh plug from the end of each axle. Using a 1 and 1 8 inch diameter punch and hammer, drive the punch into the center of the Welsh plug. Pull back and remove the plug once it has been punctured. Note, do not use a drill when removing the Welsh plug. Metal filings from drilling could enter and damage the wheel bearings. The Tire Pilot Plus features a single hole axle tube installation. Next, you must drill a centrally located hole in the top of each axle tube. If your axle features a pre-drilled hole and plug, these steps will not be necessary. The location of the hole should be near the center of the axle. However, if your axle has a center mark indicator, do not drill directly on the center mark as this is used when aligning the axles. Instead, choose a spot off to one side of the center mark. Place the SA of Holland drilling fixture onto the top of the axle and clamp down tightly with the included chain and vice grip. Make sure the drilling fixture is level to ensure the hole is drilled perpendicular to the axle. Drill a hole through the axle using a size R drill bit. Next, tap the hole using a 1 8 27 NPT pipe tap. You are now ready to proceed with the next steps. Again, if your axle features a pre drilled hole, Simply remove the plug and proceed with the next steps. The airline installation is next. You will install two quarter inch DOT airlines in each axle, one line across the entire axle, and one line from the center hole to a single axle end. Begin by feeding fish tape from one axle end through to the other axle end. Attach the airline tubing and pull it through the axle taking care to cover the end of the tubing with electrical tape to avoid getting debris in the airline tubing. Cut the tubing to length so that at least 6 inches of tubing extends past each axle end. Now you must feed airline tubing from the center hole to one axle end. The easiest method is to insert a steel screw into the end of the tubing and thread the tubing from the center hole out to one axle end. You can then use a telescopic magnet to grab the screw and pull the tubing out through the axle end. Pull the tubing through so that at least 6 inches is protruding from the axle end. Before cutting the tubing extending from the center hole, 
you must determine what length of tubing you will need to reach the T-fitting near the control box. Make sure there is sufficient tubing to route around any trailer and or suspension components. Once you have determined the proper length of tubing, cut the tubing extending from the center hole of the axle. Next you will install the center hole fitting and axle tube vent. If the axle tube vent is not already installed on the axle fitting, screw the axle tube vent onto the open side port in the fitting and tighten with a wrench. Pass the fitting and compression nut over the tubing extending from the center axle hole. Apply pipe dope or Teflon tape to the fitting threads and begin by hand tightening the fitting into the axle tube hole. Once the fitting is hand tight, use a wrench to tighten the fitting an additional 5 turns. Note, do not tighten the compression nut on top of the axle hole fitting until after installing the spindle plugs in the following steps. Spindle plug installation. Begin the spindle plug installation at the axle end with two pieces of air tubing extending out. Ensure that the tubing ends are cut square and are free of any debris. If you used a screw to assist in threading the tubing, make sure the tubing has been cut above where the screw cut threads into the tubing. Now remove the compression nut and washer from one fitting on the spindle plug and pass them onto one of the airline tubes. Firmly press the airline tube onto the spindle plug fitting. It may be helpful to rotate the tubing a quarter turn while pushing to assure the tubing is firmly seated. Hand tighten the compression nut and install the other airline tubing using the same procedures. Once both compression nuts are hand tightened, Use a pair of wrenches to further tighten the compression fittings. Next you will use a spindle plug installation tool to seat the spindle plug in the axle end. First make sure the two vent holes in the spindle plug are oriented to the 12 o'clock position. Drive the spindle plug into the axle using the installation tool and a hammer, taking care to drive it in straight. Use a feeler gauge to make sure there is no gap between the edges of the spindle plug and the axle tube, ensuring a tight seal. Now you can install the spindle plug on the opposite end of the axle using the same procedures. You may need to trim the airline tubing back further, ensuring there is about 6 inches of tubing extending from the end of the axle. Again make sure the two vent holes are oriented at the 12 o'clock position as you drive the spindle plug into the axle tube. Once the two spindle plugs are installed, you can return to the center axle hole fitting to tighten the compression nut. Before tightening the compression nut, pull the airline tubing out until taut, and then push 2-3 to three inches of tubing back down into the axle tube. This will provide some slack for the tubing inside of the axle. Now you can tighten the compression fitting all the way. Hub cap and air hose installation. Next, we recommend installing the hub caps and air hoses in order to minimize dirt and debris intrusion into the system while completing the Tire Pilot Plus installation. Begin by applying a thin coat of grease to the steel rotating shaft on the hub cap. Making sure that the hub cap gasket is installed and undamaged, seat the hub cap and gasket onto the wheel hub. Note, the steel rotating shaft should not bottom out in the spindle plug assembly. If the rotating shaft appears to hit something, first check that the rotating shaft assembly is fully tightened inside of the hub cap. If this does not solve the problem, please contact your SAF Holland representative for assistance. Tighten the hub cap bolts in a crisscross pattern. Finally, torque each bolt to 16 foot pounds. Now install each air hose between the hub cap and valve stems. The straight air hose should be connected to the inner wheel valve stem, and the U-turn air hose should be connected to the outer wheel valve stem as shown. Note: Do not over-tighten the air hose fittings. Excessive force can easily damage the O-ring seals and the fittings will leak air. If air begins to leak from any of the fittings, or back into the center axle hole tubing, this is not normal and should be immediately corrected. The air hose fittings contain two-way valves, which should prevent air from escaping the tire when connected. If you identify a leak, first remove and reconnect the leaking fitting. If air is escaping through the center axle hole tubing, there may be a problem with one of the two-way valves. 
Remove all of the air hoses and install one at a time to identify which hose is leaking. It is recommended that you order a replacement air hose if the two-way valve is not operating properly. This completes the installation for the first axle. You can now follow the same procedures to complete the installation on the second axle. When installing the airline tubing into the center axle hole, take care to cut the tubing to the proper length. This tubing must extend all the way to the T-fitting near the control box. Again, make sure there's sufficient tubing to route around any trailer and or suspension components. Pressure protection valve installation. Once both axles have been completed, you can move on to completing the plumbing and electrical components installation. If you have not already installed the control box, you should now locate and install the control box according to the procedures outlined at the beginning of this video. Next, you can install the pressure protection valve onto the trailer air tank. Warning! Before beginning the pressure protection valve installation, you must exhaust all of the air from the trailer air tank. Failure to do so could result in serious injury. If your trailer air tank includes an accessory port, start by removing the accessory port plug. Locate and install the proper size bushing to accommodate the existing plug size and the Tire Pilot Plus pressure protection valve. Be sure to apply pipe dope or Teflon tape to the fitting threads before installation. Next, install the Tire Pilot Plus pressure protection valve from your kit into the bushing. Be sure to note the airflow direction indicator on the valve. If, however, your trailer air tank does not have an accessory port, you must use the port where the existing pressure protection valve is located. Begin by removing the existing pressure protection valve from the tank. Locate and install a T-fitting into the port, and then install the original pressure protection valve onto the T-fitting. Be sure to apply pipe dope or Teflon tape to the fitting threads before installing. Next, install the Tire Pilot Plus pressure protection valve from your kit onto the other port in the T-fitting. Again, be sure to note the airflow direction indicator on the valve. Warning! You must install the Tire Pilot Plus pressure protection valve directly off of the trailer air tank. Installing this valve after an existing pressure protection valve may cause the Tire Pilot Plus system to malfunction. Loosen the outflow compression fitting on the pressure protection valve and insert the airline tubing until it is firmly seated into the fitting. It may be helpful to rotate the tubing a quarter turn while pushing to assure the tubing is firmly seated. Now you can tighten the compression fitting with a wrench. The next step is to route the airline tubing from the pressure protection valve to the control box. Once you are sure there is sufficient tubing to route around any trailer and or suspension components, cut the tubing to length. Control box airline installation. Prior to installing the airline tubes into the control box, install wire loom into each of the three airline tubes. The wire loom will help protect the airline tubes from abrasion. After the wire loom is in place, secure each airline tube with zip ties. The T-fitting connecting the axle airlines to the control box can be installed next. Find a suitable location for the T-fitting and cut each axle airline to length. Loosen each compression nut on the T-fitting and insert each axle airline into one of the ports. Hand tighten the compression fitting for now. Now cut a length of tubing to fit between the T-fitting and the exit port of the control box. The exit port is located at the top of the control box as indicated here. Loosen the compression nut on the control box port and insert the cut length of tubing. Hand tighten the compression nut. Now insert the tubing into the final port on the T-fitting and hand tighten the compression nut. Once all sections of tubing have been attached and the tubing lengths are OK, you can use a wrench to tighten each compression nut fully. Lastly, you can install the tubing from the trailer air tank into the entry port of the control box. The entry port is located at the bottom of the control box, as indicated here. Cut the tubing to length if necessary. Loosen the compression nut on the control box port and insert the tubing. Hand tighten the compression nut. Once the tubing is secure, you can use a wrench to tighten the compression nut fully. Low pressure warning light and wiring installation. We will begin the warning light and wiring installation by connecting the control box wiring terminal to the terminal on the wire from your Tire Pilot Plus kit. Next, locate and disconnect the ABS power cable leading to your trailer suspension. Install the Tire Pilot Plus ABS power adapter as shown. 
You may wish to coil and zip tie any extra wiring at this time as well. Note, if your trailer is equipped with a sliding suspension, the tire pilot plus wiring must be run next to the factory coiled wires and hoses. Now run the remaining wire up through the rails on the underside of the trailer along the driver's side. If needed, secure the wire with zip ties to existing wires or hoses. If possible, run the wires above the upper coupler plate of the trailer and exit the front of the trailer through the trailer's seven-way junction box. Locate a suitable area on the front panel of the trailer where the warning light can be mounted. Choose a location at least 30 inches above the upper coupler plate and as close to the driver's side corner as possible. The driver should have a clear view of the warning light from the roadside mirror. Mount the warning light to the trailer using the self-tapping screws included in your kit. Connect the wire from the control box to the warning light, white wire to white wire, and black wire to black wire. You can use the included wire mount clips to secure the wire to the front of the trailer as well. Any additional wire can either be coiled and zip tied near the front of the trailer or near the suspension system where the wire was routed from. Pressurizing the system and checking for air leaks. The last step in the Tire Pilot Plus system installation is to pressurize the system and check for air leaks. Connect an air supply and pressurize the trailer air tank. Next, verify that the air system valve leading into the control box is in the open position. Listen for air leaking from any of the connections and at each wheel end. In addition, soap check all of the connections to verify there are no air bubbles that may indicate a small leak. If you suspect a leak in the system, you can refer to the Tire Pilot Plus troubleshooting video for additional information. This completes the installation of the Tire Pilot Plus system.